How ready is Oregon secondary for Ohio State? Well, we can't know the answer 100%, of course, until the game actually plays out. I feel really good. Now, this is by far, I like UCLA's receivers, but this is by far the best receiving core that Oregon has faced. And Will Howard, yeah, I don't think there's a quarterback Oregon's face that's as capable as Will Howard. Is he going to go C.J. Stroud 350 to 400 yards or so? No, he's not that sort of guy. That's not the way that Ohio State has, has played football this year. They've got a great rushing attack, and then Will Howard is a really capable, really solid, complimentary quarterback that is a veteran who can make some really, really good throws. He's not going to wow you all the time, but you might look up at the end of the game and go, wow, he had 260 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, and he completed 74% of his throws. He can do that if you don't move him off his spots, and he can move a little bit as well. But this question came from a Locked on Ducks insider, which you can become for a free 14-day trial link in the description below. Get priority mailbag access, all sorts of other perks as well, or get in the mailbag the old-fashioned way, YouTube comments, or on X, formerly known as Twitter. Hey, Spencer, you touched on the D-line. I know you feel good about our defense overall. Indeed, I do. But what is your take specifically on Muhammad and Reed being able to cover Smith and Abuka? I was hoping by this time we would have Florence back to help in coverage. Yeah, Jaleel Florence coming into the season, if healthy, would have been my number two starting corner for the Ducks. It's been Nico Reed and Dante Manning going back and forth on the outside. Brandon Johnson in the slot, I feel awesome. Jabbar Muhammad, I feel good. I don't think Muhammad has been at his very best just yet. I think he's gotten better as the season has gone on. I definitely trust Jabbar Muhammad a lot more on an island than I do Nico Reed. And this is going to be the chess match that, you know, at some level exists in every football game, but especially in this one. Nico Reed and Dante Manning have both had some really good moments this year. The secondary in a whole has played awesome football. If you tell me right now, Jeremiah Smith is one-on-one -on -one with either of those guys, I hate that matchup. Absolutely hate it. That requires safety help over the top. I feel better about Brandon Johnson. He has been much better in coverage. Your eye test tells you that. Pro Football Focus tells you that. But he's in the nickel position. And so if Smith goes out wide and Oregon brings some pressure, you know, if Tysheem's on the blitz and Kobe Savage is the, the lone safety in the middle of the field, I expect Will Howard to take deep shots down the sidelines. I, I mean, that's something that this Ohio State offense under Ryan Day, I know Chip Kelly's the play caller now, but they take those sideline shots with their wide receivers a lot because they have a bunch of high-end dudes. And Jeremiah Smith is a big-time playmaker. And Abeka, Emeka Abuka is a real capable and good wide receiver. So in that scenario, I don't feel as good. With Muhammad, I think at some point you have to be able to trust him. That, that's what you brought Jabbar Muhammad in for. And I, I'd say I feel a solid 7 out of 10 about Muhammad, but I'm closer to a 4 or a 5 if, if Reed or Manning are on an island against those guys. Because those are NFL caliber wide receivers. And you know Manning and Reed, they've done some great things this year in coverage and played really well. I've seen them against NFL caliber wide receivers. I've also seen Jabbar Muhammad against NFL caliber wide receivers. He got beat a little bit last year in Seattle against Troy Franklin, and he put the clamps on him in the Pac-12 championship game. Nico Reed, Dante Manning, on the other hand, tended to get beat or have pass interference or holding. So I think that those guys specifically, I'd want safety help over the top. But then if you're rolling a safety there, does that leave you with a lighter box to stop the run where you have a couple of elite running backs for Ohio State in Travion Henderson and Quinchon Judkins? I'm glad I don't have to make those sorts of decisions because that's a really, really difficult thing and why trench play, as always, going to be really important in this game. Because if the front six for Oregon, because they've always got five defensive backs on the field and their base personnel, if the front six are able to contain the rushing attack, that's a big benefit for Oregon. But last time these teams played in 2021, Oregon wasn't able to get any sort of pressure on C.J. Stroud, left corners on islands, communication wasn't always great, and C.J. Stroud went for a bunch of yards, and Oregon was able to bend but not break and get a couple of key stops on fourth down. That, that might be what the game comes down to. It could. But if you're telling me on the seven-yard line, third down and goal, do I think Tosh Lupo and Chris Hampton and Dan Lanning dial up a, a cover zero pressure and say, yeah, Nico Reed, Jeremiah Smith, one-on-one -on, -one on the outside? No, that's, that's advantage Buckeyes. And the same goes for Dante Manning. 
who's a solid, capable player, this is his fifth year playing for the Ducks. We know what he is at this point. And when he goes up against the higher level guys, he has not had a great game so far. Maybe Saturday is the opportunity that he comes through, but I, I'd say my confidence in the secondary on the whole is high. But when you get to the 1v1 situations, it drops a little bit. And, and so how Chip Kelly goes about creating those matchups is going to be a big element for the Ohio State passing game and how successful Oregon's defense can be. This question from Cam. Hey, Spencer, hope you've been having a fantastic day. Well, thank you. You too. Do you think Jordan James will need to have a similar type of game that C.J. Verdell had? Rumors are swirling that C.J. Verdell is still running against the Buckeyes in 2021. Or do you think Oregon will be fine even if the run game isn't as successful? Also, thanks thanks so much for making my everyday commute to work worthwhile. Go Ducks. Well, I love that. Love that you listen every day on your commute. And every day are out there. Cam, appreciate you very, very much. As for your question, no. No, you do not have to have a C.J. Verdell level game in which he went for uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 634 yards and 18 touchdowns in Columbus. Was that an awesome performance? Yes. And, and, and my answer to this question is twofold. Number one, I think Oregon's passing attack in this game is far more capable than what it was in 2021, where you had Anthony Brown, young receivers, young tight ends, that's not as good of a passing attack as Dylan Gabriel with Tez Johnson, Evan Stewart, Jabbar Muhammad, or not Jabbar Muhammad, uh, Treshawn Holden, and everybody else that he throws the football to. And Terrence Ferguson, who was a freshman in that game and is now, of course, a senior and bound to play on Sundays. So, no, James does not have to go crazy. However, does Oregon need to have some semblance of balance? We've seen that that answer is yes. Because can you dink and dunk your way down the field against Ohio State? Not entirely. You'll probably have to do it more than you did against other teams. Like I think stylistically, the offense could look a lot more like it did against Idaho than it did against, say, Oregon State, where they were getting a bunch of chunk plays. Because Ohio State's got the athletes on the outside to match up with Oregon's wide receivers. Caleb Downs is a dude. Denzel Burke is a dude. I don't know every other member of their secondary off the top of my head. But those two guys, by themselves, either one would start immediately and be the best player in Oregon secondary right now. And I like Oregon secondary a lot. Those two guys are dogs. So I don't think you have to have a big game, but certainly Jordan James has to have some running lanes. Like he can not just be effective, but also be a tone setter with the way he runs the football. I mean, you talk about being a big 10 running back. Jordan James uh, is definitely that guy. Juan asks, is this year's Oregon team as good as last year's? Is Ohio State better than the Huskies team last year? I think Oregon's on a similar level. I don't think this Ohio, I think this Ohio State team is different than last year's Washington team. Whether or not the matchup plays out as it did against the Huskies a season ago remains to be seen because that was an air attack with a first round quarterback, a first round receiver, and two other NFL guys who are playing and contributing on Sundays right here, right now. That's not what this Ohio State team is. They they've got a couple NFL caliber wide receivers. It's not the same level of passing attack as Penix and those guys. So different is the way I describe it. I think Oregon is a similar level, but also different from last year's team. I don't think the offense is quite as efficient and effective yet because Gabriel's played five games in the system, whereas Bo Nix had had an entire season. I do think that this defense is better than last year. You have individuals who are better. You have a secondary that is playing at a higher level, and the numbers back that up. Oregon is yet to allow a 200-yard passer. Have they played any passing attack as good as Ohio State's? No, definitely not. I don't think last year's team started with the first five games not allowing 200-plus-yard passer. I think Tyler Shuck went for, don't remember exactly off the top of my head, it was definitely over 200 yards. They struggled more early in the year. The passing defense has been really, really good. So I think Oregon is on a very similar level, but just slightly different from a season ago. I think Ohio State is capable of playing the same level that Washington did last year, but they also do it different stylistically. And so it's not going to look exactly the same. But yeah, Washington last year was one of the five best teams in college football. And Ohio State this year, probably one of the five best teams in all of college football. And if Oregon beats them, they prove that they belong in that class as well. Love the YouTube comments. Love the DMs. Love the insider messages. However you want to get in the mailbag, keep them coming this week.